Namaste, I'm Alakananda Ma, Ayurvedic doctor and principal of Alandi Ayurveda Gurukula, a unique apprenticeship style school in Boulder, Colorado. So we've been talking about Dinacharya, daily routines. We've gone through a lot of the early morning routines, gotten to where we have our nice drink of water. The next step is our oil massage or abhyanga. So the texts actually advise us to do our oil massage every single day. And if you can do that, please do that. If you're going to do it three times a week, twice a week, as often as you can do your oil massage, please do it. For those of us that are busier, we may not be able to manage every day, but we usually have one day off a week. So then we can do our abhyanga our oil massage on that one day in the week. Why do we want to do it? To ward off old age, to help us after we've undergone exertion, to calm down vata, to improve our eyesight, to nourish the body, give long life, help with good sleep and good, strong healthy skin and especially remember to oil the head the ears and the feet even if we can't do a full abhyanga each and every day the one thing we can do for sure is oil the soles of our feet at bedtime so if once a week is all you can manage for abhyanga at least oil the soles of your feet at bedtime, rub off the excess oil or put some socks on. It will give you a much better sleep. What kind of oil should we use for our abhyanga, for vata? Typically, sesame oil. It's a very nice nourishing oil for the skin. For pitta, coconut oil is lovely for pitta. It's pretty cooling in the cold weather. We can also use sunflower oil or almond oil. Almond oil is nice for butter pitta combination too. For kapha, we can use corn oil or we can make a combination of coconut, castor and flax oil and use that for massage. Ideally, abhyanga means massaging a medicated oil and for that, you want to talk to your Ayurvedic practitioner and get a recommendation for the ideal medicated oil for you. At Alandi, we have a number of wonderful medicated oils that we make, both for different constitutions and also for health conditions that may call for a special oil. So make sure you rub the oil into your scalp so you give a good head massage, massage your ears, massage your whole body with the oil, rubbing briskly. Give yourself a nice massage. Sometimes people think we should do the oil massage after our hot shower because people have the habit of first having a shower and then putting on lotion. That's actually not the way we do it in Ayurveda. We do the oiling first, then the sweating oil, then either oil and then bathe or oil, then a sweat workout, then bathe. So that's the order that it goes in. That way you open up your pores, the oil sinks deeper into your skin, and then eventually you can take the oil off through during your bathing process whether you're using some soap at the end of your shower or bath. Traditionally, chickpea flour was used, but that can be tough on your plumbing or just having a special abhyanga towel and toweling off the excess oil with a good rough towel. Some people like to do the skin brushing also. All right, so... Make sure you oil at least once a week yourself up younger. Ask your Ayurvedic practitioner for the ideal oil. Massage the soles of your feet 
always at bedtime. Next week, we'll look into exercise. And the week after that, we'll be looking at do's and don'ts of bath. So the oil, the sweat workout, the bath, that's kind of a unit. It all fits together. I make these videos so you and your loved ones can be empowered in your well-being and enjoy the best health possible. If you've ever thought you'd like to learn more about healing with Ayurveda for yourself and others, I'd love to talk to you about our Master Ayurvedic Practitioner Program. And you can contact us via our website in the description to get more information. That's it for this week. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed this. Tell other people about the channel so they can benefit too. See you next week. Namaste.